excellent presentation, impressive uh, uh, presentation of tools, of applications, uh, of uh, new concepts, uh, everything, and I, I personally enjoyed a lot. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, to give you an introduction about uh, what all of uh, those uh, uh, related tools and applications to the cloud are about. I, I only wish that this introduction about cloud computing was at the beginning of this day because it would uh, answer lots of the questions that I have heard uh, you have asked to uh, other colleagues and professors. Anyway, uh, during uh, my small presentation, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the introduction. Uh, I'm going to open this uh, cloud uh, computing subject officially, uh, we are going to have uh, a little history of it. Uh, the market size, because it's important for us to know why everyone is talking about the cloud and why this is having uh, this uh, important, uh, uh, let's say, uh, place in our lives and in our businesses. Then we are going to see the benefits, the advantages uh, about security, uh, the, the beautiful knife that we have. We are going to have a small uh, highlight about it. And uh, how Cloud is uh, working with companies, the benefits of Cloud with companies, with all of us as end users, and uh, finally with the students. So let's uh, start and uh, see what we have to see here. So uh, I, I know that you all know about the Cloud. If you don't know about the Cloud in terms of like, theoretical speaking, you are all user of Cloud. We are all using clouds. And you have already had some explanation about clouds. Some uh, the, the presentation, the previous presentation, we heard a lot about clouds. But what is this cloud? And why it's a trend? Why everyone is talking about cloud? Uh, sometimes we say that we are all cloud users. So what does that mean? It means that we are all in the cloud now? Actually, yesterday, coming to here, we bring with us, my colleague and I, we brought to you lots of clouds, and you have seen the results. So we are so into the team, you are so fiddled to the team of the cloud. I'm sorry, I'm leaving here <laughs> today, here, tomorrow, and you'll have sun again. Anyway, uh, so let's see why this cloud means and why all of uh, companies, people everywhere, we are uh, listening, we are hearing, we are talking about this. Uh, Trend. If you go and Google the cloud computing, you see hundreds and thousands of definitions. My role is to make things simple for you. You have seen lots of examples, you have seen lots of good, 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 uh, let's say, uh, tools and examples. Here, I'm just bringing things simple and it's easiest way to you to understand. It's not that, uh, it's not really a big deal that we all think, because my students in France, when we say cloud computing, they are getting like this. So that, no, 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 it's, there's no pain in cloud computing. But computing, we are not IT. No, there's no IT. Cloud computing is really simple. And I got this uh, introduction, this definition, from different sources. In the simplest way, we can say that the cloud, the terms of the cloud, any type of internet-based computing, which can be, as you can see, server storing and accessing data, to the programming, application, and lots of other possibilities through internet instead of the hard drive. It means that all you do in your computer here, you can do it through internet and on the cloud. So, ending up with the definition, we can see that the cloud is the internet-based type of computing, giving you the possibility of the multi-tenant solutions, of the maintenance, of the automated like upgrading, any kind of uh, services and uh, use that you are having from the computer, that you can give that from the cloud in the aim of what? To be cost-effective, easy to access, 
and flexible, being a better and uh, more customized design. So we we'll come back to the advantages and benefits of the cloud later when we have had a small look about the history. Why I find it necessary for you to see a history of the cloud? Because everyone thinks cloud is a new thing. Actually, yes, the technology, because of the internet, maybe it's a new thing. But the concept, the idea, was since the creation of the IT, since the creation of computers, Computers was created in 1945, and only five years later, the concept of cloud emerged. Why? Because of the economic issues. So in 1950s, they used the mainframes, which means that the computers, as uh, uh, Monsieur le Ministre told us uh, this morning, with the terminals, they were all connected to a big mainframes, and they were using this mainframe, the sharing, the mainframe, and after that, two, 20 years later, we had these virtual machines. The virtual machines, it's an uh, advanced concept of uh, the sharing. It's uh, to share one uh, server, one computer, with um, a, a, a software like Wimmer that give you this possibility to use different operating system in only one place. So this was some uh, growing up of the idea of the cloud. Again, 20 years later, we had the VPNs and we still have the VPNs. VPNs are more complicated idea of accessing from uh, distance. I don't know if you have ever used the VPN or not, but I remember that for us that we had uh, to have lots of like business trips or traveling a lot, we always had this connection. So from anywhere, you could have uh, access to your office or from different filials of your company, you can have access to your uh, headquarter server. So that VPNs that are still using these days are another, uh, let's say, idea of this cloud to the uh, point that finally, since 2000, we have some uh, providers here that I uh, point out. Uh, they started to think uh, like deeply to make uh, to make it more like Atlas more completed and to make it as an open source. Because in case of the VPN, the VPN was for each company uh, with the specific space, with specific. Uh, uh, accessibility and everything. So going further, making uh, more uh, like uh, accessible for everyone. This was the history of uh, having uh, open sources clouds until 2012 when Oracle finally, 2012, yeah, Oracle finally uh, provided a complete, a real cloud with the main levels that the cloud should have. I'm not going to uh, very technical uh, aspect of the cloud. We had so far very good uh, technical examples and technical issues about uh, big data, about uh, uh, all of those uh, in terms of things and everything. My job is now to uh, give uh, the ideas and concept and the answer to the questions of the why we are in this situation and what are the benefits. So, only give you uh, a quick review about when we talk about cloud, answering to a question of the gentleman that asked, it's not only about the, accident, the storing of data and accessing data. As uh, the doctor said, uh, we are going to have three levels, three main uh, models of uh, uh, cloud, which they are uh, server as a service, we call it SaaS, they are platform as a service, PaaS, and there are some infrastructure as a service. So it's not only uh, about uh, having access to the data, like Dropbox that we are all use, or email web mails that we are all use, we just have access to them. We can do more, but as you can see here, the responsibilities of each uh, is different. I, I can explain here to you. This
use on premises is your own computer. What you can do on your own computer, you can do everything. You are the only owner and controller of your computer. You can make it like a, like a better, uh, with a, the, I mean, increase the performance, make it a better running, changing the design, changing the templates, changing anything. Or you can sometimes, like me, because I always love to understand what is going into the computer, and most of the time, uh, many years ago, of course, I have uh, damaged my computer and I was uh, obliged to buy another one. So this control is all yours, but in terms of the cloud, if you go through infrastructure as a cloud, you only can control which parts, the blue parts, the application, the data, the runtime, the middleware, the operating system, but the rest is out of your hands. It's in the hands of the cloud provider. If you want to know another level, if you want to go, like, have less responsibility, you want to be uh, more user than technical person, you can have, uh, as, a, as an example, the platform as a service, which you only can control the application and data. The rest is under control of your provider. And finally, SaaS, uh, software as a service, a good example of everything that we are having now. A good example of, like, uh, you go to internet, you have a video on YouTube and you watch the video. You can, what you can do with that? Nothing. You can just repeat the video. This is a good example of software as a service in the cloud computing. Now maybe you can, you're searching on your mind that, okay, which one is what? For example, I was talking about social media, Facebook. I have seen that Tunisian people are very uh, active on Facebook, which is a very good thing, Twitter. But Twitter and Facebook, what they are? Are they infrastructure as a service? Are they platforms? Or are they only the software as a service? Of course, they are not only storage. They are not like Dropbox or Google Drive. They are, they are serving you. They are giving you some softwares. Here, in this slide, you can have a clear idea about tools that you are every day using, either for your company or for your like personal purposes. Software as a service. Let's see what we know here. Have you ever worked with uh, Salesforce or CRM at work? Have you ever think about that this CRM and Salesforce are a software as a service, a cloud computing uh, service, a solution offering to you? This is example of a good example of a software as a service. Let's go and see what's going on the platform as a service. Facebook is a platform as a service. You go, you serve, you can change some application, you can add some application, you can change some, but you cannot do more. At the end of the day, the Facebook, the cloud provider, is controlling everything for you. Infrastructure as a service. Look at this. Do you recognize any of these applications, these solutions that you are using on your uh, job, on your company, or your uh, like social life or personal life. This, with this uh, diagram, you can have uh, some idea about finally what is this cloud and where is this cloud and each of these applications and solutions. Yes, they are cloud. So it's not scary. Cloud is something very simple, very friendly, and helping us everywhere all the time. Now, to give you another idea about how cloud is increasing, the growth of the cloud, it's amazing. You can see here that uh, in different way, hosting, only having uh, storing data, or serving as a platform infrastructure or software, in 2010, the market size was about 26,000 US dollar. And in 2016, which means six years, only six years later, 
being are estimated to have 79, almost 80,000 US dollar. And this is how it's growing up. This percentage is amazing. And this is the reason why everywhere you go, you see the cloud. So yes, we are all in the cloud, and yes, we are all using uh, the cloud. But do you know why? We are using cloud because cloud is everywhere, and we are everywhere too, and uh, we are using cloud because everyone do. We are using cloud because we didn't know this is the cloud, but we knew that, for example, my classmate or my competitor at work is doing that. Have you ever asked this question to yourself? It can be something automatically. It can be something like the social medias. So many people were scared about social media. So many people were so excited about social media at the point that they didn't understand that this is exactly like the knife that we have said. You don't need to put all your personal life on the social media to get, when you are in vacation, your apartment get uh, robbed by thief. Because you checked in in the airport, you gave all the information in a public, let's say, uh, mode to everyone that you are going to Hawaii and you are going to stay two weeks and you are going to meet all of your friends. And on your profile, you have mentioned your address, your age, everything that someone needs to uh, guess how equipment that you are using to secure your home, which means nothing. So when you're back from Hawaii, what happened to you? You have your apartment, but nothing else is in it. So this is not only because everyone do that we do. Here we are going to see together the benefits uh, of this cloud. In the presentation, uh, we are supposed to uh, focus on two things, on the cost and options. So I'm going to concentrate now because if I want to go through the details, it will be more and more than 10 minutes or, or so. Talking about the cost effectiveness and more options, what is the uh, main mission of the cloud? I cannot say it's the only uh, mission, but the main mission of the cloud is the maximizing effectiveness of sharing sources. But how do they do that? The first thing that we can highlight, again, I just want to repeat again that this is not only these points, but the main points that I can, that I love to talk with this lack of time are those. Increased collaboration. Before, I remember, people in different area, they had a good excuse to work together in a teamwork. We don't have access to the files. The files are so heavy, I cannot send by email. Oh, I was waiting for this because, you know, with the, with the time zone, I'm living in the States, and uh, I, I didn't receive it yet. Uh, the other one, our weekend is, you know, uh, Friday and Saturday, we work on like Sunday. So all of those excuses. Now, people, because of the cloud, they can work together easier because they all have access to one single sources with uh, some uh, security that they have to define on their companies. So what will bring this collaborative uh, collaboration? We bring the increase of uh, uh, effectiveness will bring the increase of return on investment and will bring less cost because sometimes instead of sending a huge files through uh, let's say a hard disk with the shipment cost to someone you just upload it and uh, your colleagues at the same time download from the other of the uh, uh, rest of the world. So easy access information which is a good thing but sometimes not that good. The easy information is that with a login and, uh, and password, what you can do, you can have access to the cloud from everywhere. It doesn't matter that you are using your smartphone, your tablet, your uh, cyber coffee, uh, let's say um, computer. 
you just enter, you get access to internet, you log in and not the, to, the, to your account, no matter which kind of account. Let's talk about Google. But Google, when you go in, you have your emails, you have your files, you have your pictures, you have everything that you need. So your computer is out everywhere, and your access is only depending to one uh, login and password. Language barrier. Have you ever think that uh, language can be a serious barrier for the globalization, for the collaboration, for your studies? And have you ever used these instant translators that you can, like in the form of application or even not application, like Google Translate? You can use those kind of applications everywhere. Right now, um, someone who can maybe not understand me can use this kind of application. And because of this application, which is available with you everywhere, you can work together with people from other languages. So this bring you more opportunity, this bring you more revenue on your business and, and even in your personal life with the opportunities that you can have to build your career or to your studies. Another thing is that small businesses will, will go global. I have run myself several small businesses. My problem was always, I wanted to develop my business. I had to do market study. To do your market study, what you need? You need to send people to that market. Or you need to outsource and hire people from that market. It costs a lot. If you want, to participate to any event in another market, again, you have to either send people, you have to, there's lots of costs behind. And it was uh, kind of impossible for small businesses to go global. But now, with the cloud directories like Compass, if you want to go to the China, to the Asian market, go to Alibaba. You need only to register your company. And you have access to a huge, database of the competitors, of the representatives, of the local uh, distributors, anything to develop your market. So this is an opportunity. This is cloud and more options for startups, small businesses, or any people that they want to uh, go further. So no geographical barrier uh, because of the cloud. And the good things is especially an uh, example of developing uh, countries. Have you ever noticed that developing countries, especially offshoring destinations like India, like China, like Philippines, like all of these countries are becoming stronger, are becoming a real competitor in your business. This makes you, uh, this force you to be stronger, this force you to go further, and this makes those markets possible opportunity to grow up and to build their countries and to become uh, more developed than they were. Coming back to some technical aspects of the cloud, we have almost unlimited space. I remember that in 2000, the most, I mean with laptops, we almost had no storage. We couldn't like save anything on our laptops. Everything should be in the desktop. And after that, thank God, because of the hard disk, we could store our stuff in a hard disk. And after that, advanced computer, but still desktop computers, they had more storage. But the thing is that if you especially are in like engineering or you're artist, you're in any kind of like art with big and uh, uh, like uh, volume uh, files, you always have this problem of space. With cloud, I don't know if you use any of these uh, Dropbox, these storing cloud systems, they are almost unlimited and the price, I cannot say it's very cheap, I understand it's not cheap, but it's still uh, more cost effective than buying hundred and hundred hard disk and um, having the shipment or bringing with you everywhere you want. Backup and recovery, the big headache that I uh, myself had 
the experience. So you all the time have, have to have a backup. You have a Mac, you have time machine. Is one hard disk enough? No, let's buy another hard disk. Okay, second time machine. Do I need any backup for my backup? Uh, sometimes, yes. So now what you have is a guaranteed backup. So you don't need to uh, be worried about this if you have a PC, if you have a virus and your computer is totally damaged, your data are still safe. And automatic software integration, which is a good thing because as soon as you get into the cloud, everything is installed already. You don't need to go to your mom's place to install for her some <coughs> chat services, Yahoo Messengers, for example, like Uber, or a Skype or anything. You just need to log into your Facebook, and Facebook Messenger is automatically there. These are some advantages that help us to save time, give us more options, and uh, finally, it's beneficial for us in terms of timing, uh, money, and uh, normally it's beneficial for our uh, companies. Security. Yes, security is a big, big, big issue in cloud. I understand, I myself had this problem. As have been mentioned before, the Visa, MasterCard, all of them have been hacked because when technology get more advanced, is in the two ways. The hackers' technology will get more advanced too. They are always here. They are going up with us. So there is all the time this fear of security in terms of accessing data or anything. But remember, in one point and only one point, uh, cloud is more secure than your computers. When you go to Paris, you're walking with your laptop bag. There is a scooter coming and picking your bag, and you lose your computer, and you never ever find it again. And where are your data? Oops, there is no data. This is the only and only uh, way that cloud is saving us. Okay, computer. 1,000, 2,000 euros, 200 euros, any. But data is more valuable than the materials. Quick development, as I said, so maintenance and development is quick, so you save time, you save energy, and you don't need at any time call your maintenance, your webmaster, your administrator to come to your office and to fix things for you. And fixing bugs become easier because, because of some applications uh, which are in cloud, when there is something wrong, they uh, automatically send messages, notification to the involved people. And they can fix this like kind of a hotline. There's always a hotline behind. All of the, these things were good, but we all know that we are all here, we are all doing our studies working hard for one purpose, gaining money, money talks. If you, at the end of the day, you don't gain on money, on cash flow, on return on investment, it's not valuable for you, even if it is indeed. But what is the most important to mention is that the cloud, as you can see from a survey, by Frost and Silver, the companies that they are using cloud and they replace their cloud, they have 400% ROI. And it is, of course, not because of the more options, but this being cost effective. And being cost effective is that you save money on maintenance, you save money on the materials. I don't know if you remember or not, but before companies used to have. Uh, Technical firms, I mean small companies, very small companies, they had a technical firms, which means that they have to allocate one room, one office for the technical space, and they had to buy very expensive servers, and they had to hire one technical person to maintain that. So all of this is replacing by cloud, even if there are different business models with the cloud. There are subscription, 
there are pay as you go and other uh, business models that can be uh, uh, customized with each uh, industry or companies. This is the reality of benefits that we can have from cloud. But again, it's not all. It's, uh, from my point of view, is the most important. Security, coming back to the security. I don't want to say that cloud is the best, because so far you, I gave you the impression that I'm so in love with cloud. No, this is not the case. This cloud caused us so many troubles because of the security, yes. But what I can only uh, here uh, advise to you is that as a user, I'm not talking you, uh, as a company or as a very technical person, but only as a user, whenever you want to subscribe to any cloud, please read the service level agreement. SLA is a key option in the cloud. Sometimes we are in rush. We are here, we have internet, and I cannot stay the whole day here, and I need to fix my Viber. So I, I install Viber, and I want to log in. I have two options, log in with your Facebook account, or uh, like subscribe. So, oh my god, it's too much work to do. Okay, you just tempted to push log in with Facebook. Don't do that. Don't use your social medias for logging everywhere. They get connected to each other, and this is not secure. And if you want to subscribe to any cloud-based system, please read this SLA. It's, it's a matter of, there's four points only about it. The control, which makes that who is controlling the performance, the quality of your data, because they have to be safe, they have to be in a good hands. The other thing is that the operational risk. So at the end of the day, who is going to be the owner of my data? I know that I have made this presentation, and this presentation now is in my Google Drive. So tomorrow, if my Google Drive gets hacked, how can I, how can I like, say that this was my presentation? OK, this presentation I can put it online, but if it's confidential data. Only business risk. Who said that Google, I'm sorry, Google, but who, who said that Google will never get bankrupt? If my provider get background, what will happen to me and my data? So these are important uh, issues to read before signing because the bad thing about big data, Internet of Things, the cloud is that they are so fast and we are all, all the time in rush and we want to do something to have the result and then, then go. So this makes us all click, agree, Accept, boom, next step, and use it. Try to understand at least if something happened, what are going to be the penalties and rewards. If you are a company, I'm sure, just giving you some examples, that you have already uh, experienced one of those uh, cloud-based uh, solutions, like a WebEx for the telecommunication, giving you less uh, cost and more options. Office life, administrative help of the cloud. A CRM, of course, a public relation and marketing help from the cloud. Databases for server, uh, the database and storing data help from. E commerce Amazon, as our friend were uh, telling us, this is the great application of the cloud. Uh, helping you to uh, not only uh, use uh, the benefits of the Amazon, but doing lots of the e-commerce. The social media, the ad exchange, the web marketing, they are all the purpose of the marketing for a company. And finally, e-banking and e-finance. These, again, are not all of them, some of them, to just uh, make you understand that, ooh, this cloud, who's this? It's not something like very complicated, strange, or scary. This is what we are all using every day in our office, in our life, with the social media, with the people. Gaming. Did you know that all of this gaming, we are all gamers? Don't tell me no. When you go to the metro, when you go to a bus, 
Everyone is doing something. And when you want to get out, you see that, ooh, how many game applications are running here? This is cloud. The, the, the simplest way of using cloud. The PayPal, the Google Translate, dictionaries, all of this that can help us to uh, go faster, make life easier for us, and more accessible. And the MOOCs. I know that some people are interested about the e-learning, about the MOOCs, and since this is my specialty, and since that you are students, let's have a short case study and show you how e-learning, cloud-based e-learning, can be useful for you. The thing is that, do you think that, do, do you believe on e-learning? Do you think that is the right time for the e-learning? Most of the people, they don't. And you're right, this is scary a little bit. But it's the beginning. As the Mr. Luminis said this morning, now is the time of the blended studies, for Master Mixed. The blended studies that you have this alternative, you have this option, you have this nice big cloud with you, anytime, anywhere with you, but you have the security of coming here to SUPCO and ask your questions with your professor, etc., etc., and have the interactivity with other classmates. But believe it or not, believe it or not, in five years I will come back here and I will meet you and I ask you, what do you think about e learning? I will see. Okay. Rendezvous in five years. But now, going back to the e learning as a cloud based case study, I can say that how e learning is saving students from the cost, from the flexibility. You can learn every, everywhere. You don't need to pay travel costs or even a train cost or going by car to the classroom. So these are more opportunities, more options of the e-learning. Excuse me, Dr. Mr. I'm going to do it very fast. Okay. Thank you, sir. So just to tell you that because of this e-learning um, cloud-based uh, platform, you can have more interactivity, you can have more flexibility, and more options. So you save money, and uh, you have more options. And know that, in most of the time, the e-learning programs are cheaper than on-campus programs. So, since you have been students here, I wanted to you to feel and to think about the e-learning as a cloud example and uh, have some investigations. Maybe that can be a good option. I'm not here to do marketing for e-learning, not at all, because everything should be in the, the right time whenever people are ready for it. But uh, as we have seen before, this can be a good case study. I will give this uh, presentation available to for example, here, how people, how companies have uh, gained money and saved money from transforming their training to the blended and to the e-learning. I'm going to leave this presentation. Coffee break. Uh, Truck to two. Big data. Great team Truck three. This, uh, Cloud computing. If you want Coffee to break. Later, and I'll be at your disposal if any questions. Thank you very much for your Thank you very much for this impressive lecture uh, and question, please, just one question uh, on a hurry. Thank you very much. 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 Thank Monsieur Sifio est absent, c'est lui qui normalement a assuré les dernières conférences, trop beau des clubs. Vous êtes content Je vous amène tous à vous. Lunch break. Donc, euh, savourez, profitez de l'esprit de working. Surtout, on se retrouve.